so if you want to do some dotted lines around um, your illustration I think is uh, very easy if you're starting from a vector graphic so I'll show you two ways one is creating dotted lines around um, a vector graphic and another is using an image and converting it into a vector and then creating dotted lines around it. So uh, here's these food icons and all of them are in vector graphic. And so I'll just choose the cherry and I'll just copy and I open in the new file and I'll paste. So I'm just let me just increase that. So this is the first method. So basically this is uh, this chair is all vector graphic and it's obviously grouped. So I'm just going to ungroup it control shift G. And uh, so looking at this, we really have this basic shape of um, the cherry, which is very easy to start with. The next thing, if you notice, you want to have like, you want it to be like a cut out, right? So you, it's normally you have like a gap a small gap um, outside your outside your illustration so to do that just click on this uh, black area okay so basically like the actual shape of your illustration and then go to object and you go to path and offset path okay and um, I'll just hit the preview button so basically you're creating a, a stroke outside your graphic or basically uh, uh, a background um, outline of your graphic okay and you can you can adjust this on the offset section you could maybe if you want it bigger it, it will be bigger yeah but that's too big so we'll stick to two meals two meals is pretty good and we leave this as an admiter you can do round um, and bevel. I'm not so sure what's the difference. They all look alike to me, but uh, play around. But I usually just uh, I just ignore this and leave it as uh, it, and leave it as miter and click OK. Okay, so basically you already created a like a background uh, background uh, shape of uh, behind your actual. A cherry actual illustration so I'll just use my direct selection tool so this is the original one and this is the one you created and then I'm just going to change the color so you can see what I've just done okay so as you can see this is a shape and it's not yet in stroke so what you can do is you can switch swap it and it will look like this and then the next thing you can do to do the dotted lines is go to your right uh, tab here and click on stroke and then click on dash line okay and um, to keep it simple oops I have to select this I have to select this first okay then click dash line all right so and if I let it go, you can see it's um, very small. So I'll just remove this to see how it looks. I have to select it. Remember to select it first. I'll just remove these, and you can see it's pretty much done. If you want it to be bigger, you obviously you can increase this dash. Oh, I have a habit of not selecting it, so I'll just select it. Yep, yeah, it's bigger. And you can change the stroke color to. Um, you change the stroke color. Yep, you can go to here, go to black, and then there you go. And uh, if you want to get extra creative and you want to do a your own customized uh, dash line, like the different gaps and so on, you can select it. And then you can maybe put, uh, I want a gap of 10 points. And maybe another, maybe I'll create a one point here. So you have the variation of, uh, uh, you can see that it's a customized line. It's quite, uh, you can customize it to however you like, really. So you give a different creative look or feel to your graphic. Uh, but of course, if you want just to be like a normal cutout, you can just keep it simple and just uh, stick it to two points. Yeah. 
or three points is better. So you have to see what works for you. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. I think three points is best for the size. Uh, obviously, if you do try to scale it down, your gap size would be different again. So you need to, if you want to do this, I suggest you uh, scale it to the right size that you want first. Um, and then only do the method I taught you, and then only do the dash line. If not, you have to keep adjusting the, the size of the dash line, okay? So that is number one. Okay, let's say um, you have an image that you want to, uh, you just want to have a cutout of that image, or sorry, of the, the shape of a certain image. Uh, for example, all of these are vector. Let me just find, okay. All right, all right, all right. Let me find, okay, I found it, I found it. PNG, okay, let's say you have a PNG file and you want to, you like the shape of this owl and you want to, you want the shape of the owl and you want to cut out the owl. Uh, you can do that by going to, just opening up in a new file here. So basically this is an, is an image, it's a PNG file. So what I usually do is I vectorize it first. So you do an image trace. Um, I can just put default really. So let me just see what it does for me. Uh, so you need to adjust it, okay? So go to your, click here to go your image trace settings and yeah, so it's a little bit higher. Yeah, so I want to make, make basically I want it to be all closed gap. So make sure you get the, all the gaps all closed so that I can do the outline easily. So a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, so basically I got a basic outline of the owl, and I'm quite happy with it. And I put I click on to expand. Okay, and then it will expand into a vector graphic. And so I'll just control shift G to ungroup it because I don't want this uh, square background. So just make sure that nothing is hindering me and just double check there's nothing in the background. So I'll just click on this owl again. You go to your object path and offset path. And then I'll maybe stick to three mils. And I click preview. Yeah, it's perfect. And then I click OK. So I'll do my direct selection tool and click on the back. Oops, click on the background. And then, um, oops, it doesn't mean give me a color because I converted straight away to a black and white. So I'll just open my swatch library, color books to Pantone. And just just like any color, so I can so you can see what I'm selecting. Okay. So, um, and so we have. We'll go to my selection tool and select this part. And you notice this orange part when I do the offset, it offset the inside part as well. So to remove that, um, okay, I want to do that first because I'm quite a perfectionist and I don't want all this thing that, that comes out here. So we'll just remove these points here. Uh, we can go to your pen selection and go to delete anchor point like that. All right. We don't want it to be all jutting out like that. Let me see what else I can do. Um, I think oh, this is all okay, okay. It's just this part inside. I don't want that to, to stand out. So what I can do is, this is the very, very lazy way of doing it. You can use your pen and then just create a shape that is covering this whole part. 
okay and you'll see what I'm gonna do just um, bear with me for a moment you want to cover all the part that has that okay so I'll change it to white Is that white? Yep, just white. All right. And I'll select this part and uh, wait, hold on. I'll select this to control shift or set to front. Oops. Put, uh, arrange. Bring to front, and then you get you get that. Oh, the face is covered. Ah, oh, okay, I know what to do now. So, I'll oh. Select all of these, hold your shift key and then select everything. I'll group it, control G, and then um, I'll send it to front again. Bring to front. Okay, so I'll just put this back. It's supposed to be like that, right? There you go. <laughs> now it looks better now. Now this is the lazy way of doing it, okay? There's, of course, a cleaner way to do it, but... Uh, my point is I want to get this out dotted line okay so uh, again I switch it and then I'll change the color to so, oops, I'll change the color to black and then where's my we'll go to the stroke area and go to your dash line and that is it that how, that's how you create a dotted line on a image which you just want to um, convert it into a shape you know without um, without doing much I mean without the color just a black and white shape so that's how you use that's how you create a dotted lines around a image that's been converted into a vector graphic uh, my, it's a bit long-winded so, but I thought you know in case if you need to do something like that you have that option. So thank you and I hope that helps.